So it says uh, marble, rows of a uh, tabletop, um, rows of a uh, tabletop, 1.25 meter high. I like to uh, draw kind of uh, figures as I try to figure out what information the question is giving me. So that's what I'm drawing. Uh, marble is rolling off a tabletop of a certain height. Uh, and it hits, uh, and I guess it's gonna kind of go through like a projectile motion thing. And it'll hit the floor at a point, 3.9 meters away or distance D away from the table's edge in a horizontal direction. All right. Um, so it asks how long is the marble in the air? And um, I hope in physics 4A, you learned kinematics equations, especially the uh, kinematics equations for motion under constant acceleration. And you remember expressions like this, the height of an object falling under gravitational acceleration is minus one half gt squared plus initial y velocity t plus um, initial y position and it's the uh, um, there's a, a lot of synthesis to be done where you have to bring in the things that you know um, kind of understand at an intuitive level that it somehow relates to questions like this um, you know, kind of it's you know the, the like in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, there's a, a you know, what's the answer, the ultimate answer. And the harder part is coming up with the ultimate question. <laughs> and, um, and that's a, really the harder part in physics, uh, coming up with the equations that you have to solve in order to actually go through the math. And uh, that's the skill that uh, we hope that you developed as you worked through Physics 4A. And that's the skill that we hope that you continue to develop as you work through physics for me. So, um, so I know from having gone through physics 4A that this equation is somehow relevant. And having written it down, I know it simplifies because um, the initial y velocity is zero. It's only moving horizontally. This is just the x component. And, and um, for the how long marble is in the air, so I'm looking at the point when the marble has uh, marble hit the ground. So say that this is t equals zero and I'm looking at when it hit the ground. So um, at that time t final, I know the y position of the marble should be zero. It should be on the ground and my initial y position is h. So that gives me the equation to solve for. Let me write down the simplified version here. Zero is equal to minus one half gt final square plus h. So the rest is algebra. And it's this algebra is uh, not complicated. It, the complicated and difficult part is actually coming up with the equations themselves because in many of the physics questions, you're not told what equations to use. Um, you are expected to know <laughs> what they are from your understanding of physics. So let me solve this for T final. Um, I'm just gonna do that in my head in the interest of time. When you do that, you two H over G square rooted. And I'm just gonna check the units. This should have been the unit of seconds and this should be the unit of meters, meters per second squared, meters cancel out, this goes to the numerator, square root, okay. So the units work out, so I probably did it correctly. So um, yeah, so, and you plug in the numbers and um, that'll give you the answer there. <laughs> Let me keep working through. Um, so it asks, so what is the speed of the marble when it leaves the table's edge? So I labeled it here, but I guess reading the question more carefully, I realized, oh, I was never told what this is. So that's a label of an unknown. So I need some additional information to figure this out. And um, this is where, you know, you go through the equations that you know, and one of the equations that hopefully you, you will hit upon as being 
relevant to this question is one that relates the displacement with um, speed and time, which is that uh, displacement is given by average speed times the duration of um, the movement. Here, if you go back to the projectile motion, the x component of velocity is going to be constant. So what I label this the average velocity really is just the, the initial x velocity. And oh, and I worked out the time here. This uh, duration of time is this t final that we worked out earlier. And the delta x, we are the displacement in the horizontal direction. We are given that here. So d. So let me solve that for um, v. That should give me the um, what they are looking for here. So this was a for part b. All I need to do is to solve that for speed, um, initial x velocity is the displacement d divided by the time, or let me just write that out, square root of 2h over g. And um, I guess I just had to plug in the numbers. Um, all the numbers are given. Um, and what is its speed when it hits the floor? Um, that's where you kind of have to recall um, uh, vector quality of movement. So you have, um, so when it left the uh, table's edge, this was the entire velocity. It only had the horizontal component. All right. When it's hitting the ground there, it has, um, you know, it's moving in a kind of diagonal direction and uh, diagonal direction. <laughs> um, so it has X component, which it will be the same X component that you had before, V naught X. And it'll have downward direction, which is V naught Y final that you kind of have to work out. And once you work this out, then the final speed will be given by the Pythagorean theorem, square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. So I need to work this out. And for that, I recall one of the kinematics equations, which is that um, the V final is equal to V initial plus uh, acceleration times time. In this particular case, in the y direction, acceleration is minus g, so this will be v naught minus g t final. The v naught was zero, so go to zero. So I have t final from part a. Many physics questions are kind of cumulative. <laughs> That's why it's good to organize your work because you might need it. Um, so yeah, so I plug this in, then I get for that uh, V naught Y final is equal to um, minus G times that quantity there. And doing the simplification in my head, it's two H square root of two H G. And at this point, I'll probably just plug in the numbers and use those numbers to calculate um, these to get the speed for parsing. 